Hello everyone, hope you're doing well, hope you're keeping safe, hope you're keeping sane. Now in part one of this series I spoke about my own personal gambling debt, uh, how it spiralled out of control and the position I ended up finding myself in. If you haven't seen that video already, it will be the one before this on the channel. If I remember to put up one of the cards, it will be somewhere up in the uh, in the video here. Um, but just to quickly summarise, I found myself in a significant amount of debt. Uh, I felt like the Sword of Damocles was hanging over my head. Every time I got paid, all my money was going out on repayments. Um, and this is so often the case when you develop a, a gambling problem and a debt problem. is your, your, your debt isn't in one sort of nice, easy-to-manage lump. It's in bits and pieces all over the place from various different lenders, ranging from your banks, your credit cards, your payday loans, your overdrafts, all the rest of it, right? So you've got bits everywhere obviously normally with ever increasingly dodgy lenders so you start with your mainstream ones and you end up with all these little subprime as they used to call them um, lenders like payday loan companies and that sort of thing so it all becomes a big mess basically a big ball of debt big thing hanging over your head stress coming out your ears no money more payments going out than you can actually afford to pay and you get to a point of complete helplessness Okay, and that can have certain mental health implications, certain sort of well-being implications. And as I said in the last video, very clearly, if you are suffering in that way, then check out the help in the description below. Um, Samaritans for immediate help, uh, Gamcare for help with your gambling, and so on and so forth. Okay, I am not a counsellor. Um, I am not even a uh, someone really in a position to give financial advice, of course, but I'm here to share my experiences. So, with those uh, disclaimers out of the way, these are the first steps once you find yourself in that position that I was in. Um, first and foremost, and I'm not going to dig into this one too deeply because it kind of goes without saying and I don't want to come across all sort of preachy and parental about it, um, but that is to stop gambling, of course. If that is the thing that has got you into this debt in the first place, then stop doing it. Whilst you're doing yourself more and more damage, you can't repair the damage you've already done. It kind of goes without saying, and also there's tons and tons of videos on this channel and all over YouTube about you know quitting gambling, getting into gambling recovery, and so on and so forth. Plus, it is something that it, it's a very very hard pill to swallow. All right, because it's so obvious, and it's not something we want to hear. It's like when you're a kid and you're told that you can't eat too many sweets because they're bad for you. And you know you can't eat too many sweets because they're bad for you, but you, you still kind of never, you still get tired of hearing it from your parents, you know. So I don't want to be that person, but it does go without saying that the thing that got you into the problem in the first place isn't going to get you out of it. And whilst you continue to dig yourself a bigger and bigger hole, there's very little point in trying to fill that hole in. Um, and I'll try and keep the metaphors down to a, a minimum. Okay, so that's the first stage, right? That's the, the obvious one. Now, the second point is keep your money safe, all right? I don't know wherever your money's coming from, be it through you know, regular employment, be it through you know, self-employment, be it through benefits, be it through whatever, right? However you're receiving the money you use to live, then make sure that's safe. And normally what that will involve is setting up a new bank account. I would recommend someone like uh, Revolut or Monzo or one of those online banking um platforms that you can set up very quickly very easily in a matter of minutes uh, and then you can literally transfer your wages or whatever over to that set up your key important priority direct debits so your rent your mortgage your council tax your utilities and all the rest of it transfer those over uh, some of these banks will actually you know allow you to do they'll, they'll do it for you um, personally, I'd recommend doing it yourself. That way you can monitor what your what direct debits you're transferring over and make sure that only the priority ones, only the key ones are going to be paid. All right? And that keeps your money safe. That is the first bit of buying breathing space. You know, The companies that are constantly collecting payments from you can only continue to do so whilst they have access to your money. Another point for a very quick disclaimer is that you should realistically, morally, intend to pay the money back that you have borrowed. A lot of what I talk about, your approach to it, your action on it, and how you deal with your creditors, will kind of depend on your moral standpoint on this. Okay, and I'm not here to judge one way or the other, right? Morally, I guess, if we take this to the nth degree, you should always fulfill your obligations under the contracts you signed with these lenders. You should pay back the money you borrowed at the very, very least. Okay, but there might be situations where you don't end up doing that. And I'll leave that down to your own sort of moral judgment. Okay. Um, at this point, 
we will very quickly touch upon credit score. Now, the chances are, if you are in this significant amount of debt, particularly with subprime payday lenders and stuff, that your credit score is pretty much knackered anyway. So if that isn't a concern, as it probably won't be to most people in this position, then we can proceed to the next stage. If your credit score is still very good and it is something you want to protect, then I'm probably not the man to speak to. All right, because what you'll have to probably do is try as much as possible to continue to fulfill your current credit obligations, your current repayments in order to protect your credit score. I am coming from an angle of someone whose credit score is already out the window, already knackered, and you know it's kind of beyond saving at this point. All right, next stage, audit. Now, this is the painful bit. This is where you get an Excel spreadsheet, or if you're old school, a pen and paper, and you write down your debts, every single last one of them, be that credit cards, loans, overdrafts, payday loans, other ones which I've probably forgotten but almost invariably had, money you owe to friends, family and all the rest of it, okay. Anything you owe, you write it down. You write down who it's owed to and you write down the balance. Now who it's owed to could be the original lender, depending on how far you are down the line it might be a some sort of debt recovery uh, company. But either way, write down who you currently owe the money to, how much you owe them. And then do the thing that we all kind of try and put off doing, which is add it up. At the bottom of the payments, the bottom of the balance sheet, write down how much you owe. Now, funnily enough, this isn't even entirely necessary. All right, but what it will do is give you a reality check. It will tell you where you stand. All right, and in your head, you'll probably have a, an approximate figure that you think you might owe. Also in your head, you'll probably have what you deem to be a worst case scenario figure. Oh, well, actually, it's, you know, I think it might be 20 grand, but oh, actually it could be as high as 25. And what you'll probably find is you'll top all the numbers up and it'll be 30, right? Um, and it's worth mentioning at this point that actually the, the, the value is irrelevant. Um, it's, it's completely subjective, obviously, as to, you know, your current financial situation, your income and all the rest of it. So the numbers aren't really that important. But what is important is taking stock of the situation. Add it all up, find out how much you owe, and then breathe all right maybe cry a little maybe have a drink <laughs> do whatever you got to do right and don't gamble but do whatever you got to do to cope with the realization that you know this is the situation i'm in but there is a positive from this right once you know what situation you're in you can start to deal with it and aside from getting a new bank account set up the other way to buy yourself breathing space is to ask for it Gambling is an increased problem in this country, and as such, the benefit to us is that it has become far more recognised as a medical or psychological mental health condition, whatever you want to call it. Right? So a lot of the um, financial institutions are obligated, under certain circumstances, to respect gambling addiction as you know, a reason why, why debts may not be getting paid. So write a letter template and send it off to every one of your creditors on this list. Obviously, you don't have to send it to your friends and family, you know, just maybe have a little word in their shell like for that, but send it off to everyone on the list to say, look, this is the situation I'm in. I can't afford to continue with the contractual repayments. Please can I have 30 days if you're feeling brave, 60 days if you want to test the water and try for 60 days, 90 days if you want to push your luck, right? Generally, I would go for 60 days. Ask for 60 days in order to get your affairs in order and come back to them with an offer of repayment. What you can do is explain that you are um, dealing with a, a sort of a debt charity, someone like Step Change. Okay, that obviously gives some sort of element of legitimacy, authenticity to your letter, to your plea for breathing space and for time to set up a payment plan. Now, what I should have said, what should have been the previous step really, is you can do that. You can go to someone like Step Change and this is pretty much where I finish telling you my story because if you choose to go that route, they will deal with your creditors on your behalf. They will take that big long list that you've made and cried over. They will look at your income and expenditure and I will do a separate video on income and expenditure and they will make an offer on your behalf to your creditors. And that's a very nice, easy way of doing it. And then you have one amount which you pay them every month and they then distribute it between the people you owe money to. I didn't do that, and that's where this series will now continue. I chose to manage this all myself, and the benefits to that are that you may find you can get a better deal, you can get lower monthly payments, and you can ultimately end up repaying less money than you maybe would with a debt management company, particularly if that debt management company is not a charity-based one, 
and you end up paying them a fee for their services, right? So write off to all the companies on the list. Tell them that you'd like some breathing space. And that's it. That is it for now, right? Because whilst the letters are in the post, sit back and wait. Wait for their response. And I recommend strongly throughout this entire process that you deal exclusively by post. Yes, you have to pay for stamps, which is a bit annoying, right? But if you write to them, and if you insist when you write to them that they communicate you with you only by post, this will stop unwarranted emails. This will stop unwarranted unsolicited phone calls. And it will keep a paper trail of everything that you are doing. Every balance, every repayment plan, every arrangement that you have in place will be written down and you can keep that. Put it on your spreadsheet, but keep the letter and you'll have a paper copy, a paper record of what you have arranged with who. And then you can refer back to it should you need to in the future. And like I say, if you insist they only communicate with you by letter, not only do you just stop the phone calls, but actually it keeps a nice, steady flow. And by that I mean that you send them a letter, it will take them a week to respond. They then write back, you then got another week or so to respond. It slows the whole process down. And all the time you're doing this, it's allowing you to breathe. If you've got your new bank account set up, you're financially secure. Okay, So you can breathe, you can relax, and you can deal with this at a sensible pace. If you get on the phone and you start trying to sort this out over the phone with everyone, as they will all try and insist you do, okay, then you will be bombarded by phone calls. You will lose track of what's going on. And you'll have to try and get it sorted pretty quickly. Write to them, you've got time. And then ask for 30, 60, 90 days, whatever you want to try and try for. Um, suspend all payments. And that is the other way to do this, of course, is not write to them to tell them you can't pay them, but just stop paying them. This I'll refer you back to my credit score thing. If you don't care about your credit score, if you couldn't really be any worse, then what you can do, cancel all direct debits, cancel all standing orders, cancel all outstanding payments to your creditors. And they will then write to you. Save you the cost of some stamps, of course, but you will, of course, then have to reply to them in turn. And what I want to address in the next video is what to write, you know, how to respond. If you're going to make an offer, what to offer them, how to figure that out. Um, and I'll touch upon that as long as well as income and expenditure forms and all the rest of it in upcoming videos. But if you follow the instructions of this video, make your money safe, decide whether you want a company to deal with this or you want to deal with it yourself, cancel all unnecessary payments, add up everything you owe, take a good audit of your own personal debt, your personal finances, and relax. And then slowly you'll feel that weight lifting. But none of this, none of this is of any benefit to anyone whilst you're still gambling. And I, like I say, I don't want to sit here and be your, be your, you know, be your parents and, and nag you and say, well, you know, you've got to stop doing this, right? If you're not ready to stop gambling, that's absolutely fine. Okay, that's your choice, that's your life. But if you've made that decision, you've made that conscious choice to stop gambling, and there's tons of videos on this channel about that, so I won't go into, like I say, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, but then you are on the right path to not only recovery from your gambling, but financial recovery and not even prosperity, but security and peace of mind. And like I say, if I'd done this years sooner, maybe I'd have a little bit more hair, wouldn't I? But for now, stay safe, stay sane, and I'll catch you in the next video. All the best, guys.